let's review some concepts regarding document flow. At this point, you should have learned the basics about documents and how they are used within Atomsphere. We want to quickly review the basics and then look at some more advanced techniques and best practices. The document is the main unit that powers the execution in a process flow. And Del Boomi supports five raw document types, XML, JSON, flat file, database, and EDI. Documents are presented in four different formats. There are records for flat files and database record sets, transactions for XML and EDI, file instances are for any kind of communication between systems that don't require a structure analysis. So for example, this might be an email attachment, an image, or export to disk. And there is an empty document as well for simply triggering subsequent shapes in a process. Now let's talk about some more advanced aspects of document flow. In the following slides, we'll define these concepts. The shape execution, the execution path, a batch document, the original document ID, document failures, and altering document flow. Shape execution refers to how the documents move through each shape in the process. By default, documents do not flow through a process one by one. Instead, they flow through as a group. Yet, each document is processed by the shape in sequence and generally independently from the others, allowing each shape to process the entire group of documents that flow through the process allows for much greater processing speeds as compared to having one document flow through at a time. This is because the shape logic is loaded into memory once for the entire group of documents instead of initializing a connection or map shape for every document that has to flow into it. So the documents move together from one shape to another and then wait for all documents to process in that shape before moving on to the next shape together. A shape will only execute if a document flows into it. Therefore, if a start shape doesn't return any documents, then no subsequent steps are executed. An exception to this is the no data start shape, which will create a blank document and send it down the process. This document will trigger the next shape in the path, even though it doesn't contain any data. Documents flow from left to right and never affect a prior execution shape. This makes sense since all documents have already passed through that shape. Group processing of documents is a more efficient method of executing a process, as we have already mentioned. The execution path is the route documents take through a process. Each document will begin at the start shape and move to one or many endpoints. Different documents can and often will take different paths through your process. Routing shapes like decision, uh, the route, or business rule shape can cause different documents to take different paths. In a branch shape, however, all successful documents move down every branch of the shape. Paths execute sequentially and not in parallel. What that means is a path completes before the next path starts. True goes before false, accepted goes before rejected. In a branch shape, branch one would fully execute before branch two begins. Branch two fully executes before branch three begins, and so on. Paths are independent of each other. They cannot communicate document changes like data or properties across the branches. So if you want the process data of one branch to impact the document as it flows down another branch, you must use some other technique to pass data to the next path. So for example, uh, you could place a document into the document cache shape when going down branch one and then retrieve that document or do a cache lookup when going down branch two. Now to the concept of a batch document. A batch document is when multiple logical records move through the Boomi process as a single document. These can be formed when documents are read in through a connector or grouped together in a data process shape as part of the process. It's important to note that some shapes are only going to be able to reference and or evaluate the first record in a batch document. The decision shape is one of these shapes. It will send the entire document down the true or false path based upon only the first record. But there are other shapes like the map, 
which is able to reference all the records and iterate through those records. So it's most common to batch flat files and database data, but you can do it also for XML or JSON. Records with a single batch document can be aggregated in maps. Let's consider a related concept, which is the original document ID. Boomi assigns every document an internal and unpublished identifier known as the original document ID. The Boomi process uses the ID to keep track of each document that flows through the process. This keeps document properties and content connected properly. This has some interesting implications, especially on batch documents. So splitting a document in the process propagates the original document ID to all of the resulting documents. Each document that's split from the original will have the same original document ID. Similarly, if you combine documents, they will consolidate into a single document created with a single original document ID. Now, most documents will come in through a connector shape and will there receive their original document ID. But you may have a process that uses a connector call inside of another shape, and if that creates a new document, then it too will get an original document ID. If you bring in a batch document and split it, once again propagating the original document ID to all of the split documents, then you can use the view linked documents command in the document detail view in the logs to see the results of all associated documents that share that common ID. Since original document IDs are unpublished, it can be very useful to create tracking numbers to associate document IDs with real world information, such as a business ID. Now we're going to wrap all of these concepts together and talk about document failures. When an error occurs, the affected document stops immediately and does not continue to subsequent shapes. On the back end, what happens is that Atomsphere marks the original document ID as a failure, which we'll see in a moment, has some big implications. It's important to make a distinction here. So there are two types of errors. One is a process level error, which stops all documents and the entire process immediately. And there are document level errors as well, which stop just the individual document, but other documents continue processing. So here's that important implication. We said that all documents have an original document ID and that batch documents share a single original document ID even after it is split into multiple documents. So when a batch document is split and one split document fails, then all of the split documents fail and stop processing. This is because they share the same original document ID, which is marked as a failure. You get similar results when you combine documents into a batch. If one record in the batch fails, then the entire batch document fails. Again, there is one original document ID when you combine. This animation illustrates the document failure concept. Two individual documents are returned from the database query, and they have separate original document IDs. They flow into the branch shape and copies of the documents are made. Then they flow down branch one, where document two fails and stops processing. This is a document level error. So document one continues to execute down branch two to completion. This animation illustrates what happens with a batch document that is split and then errors. The FTP query returns a single document with two records in it. The data process shape splits the document into two documents with one record each. The branch shape makes copies of these documents. And when document two fails, the original document ID is marked as a failure, causing document one to stop also. So no documents execute down branch two. Now, before we get into using a shape to alter the document flow, keep in mind that you can change settings within the connector to control how documents are brought into the process. You can choose to bring in the documents individually or as a batch file. 
Now, even if you have to work with batch files, there is an alternative to one fail and all fail with split documents, and that is by using a try-catch shape. The try-catch shape is typically used in error handling, and this is a section we'll discuss later in this class, but we bring it up here because the try-catch shape does something very helpful in this scenario. It automatically resets the original document ID to a unique ID for each document that flows through it. It does this so that each document can pass or fail individually. There's no other shape or strategy to reset the ID, just the try-catch shape. Now let's look at another example with a document split. Again, one document with multiple records is brought in from the start shape. The data process shape splits the records into two different documents with the same document ID. Next, the try-catch shape resets the document IDs so that each document can fail individually. All documents flow down the try path. Document 2 fails at the Salesforce connector, while document 1 flows through to completion. Document 2 flows down the catch path. The document flow shape is another way to alter document flow, though this does not have to do with batch documents or errors. Rather, by using document flow, you can execute documents individually through the process or set an arbitrary group size. With this shape, you can do parallel processing across threads or across JVMs. Earlier, we said that all documents are processed as a group within one shape and then move to the next together as a group. This shape allows you to change that default behavior so that documents execute one at a time and they wait for the previous document to complete the entire process before the next one starts. It's important to consider that with running documents individually, you will see a significant performance decrease because each document has to initialize each shape in the process. That means the process has to initialize a new connection to the connector endpoint for each document instead of doing that task just once for the whole process. But there are some times when this can be useful. For example, in cases where one record post impacts the processing of the next, or in inventory situations where there is an incremental count required or perhaps when detecting duplicates across documents within the same group. So let's do a short review. All documents flow as a group. All documents are processed in a shape and then continue on to the next shape. Documents flow down one path to completion and then sequentially down the next. Documents can and often do have different paths. Documents can flow as a batch of logical records or as a single logical record. And you have the ability to choose how the documents enter the process within your connector settings. Shapes act differently on documents and batches and can modify document groupings into batches and split them out of batches. Document failure changes execution path by stopping the execution of that document. Batching impacts path because other split documents may be affected by a single document error.